This is Andre for Inside EVs, and I'm in Stuttgart checking out the new Mercedes CLA, which is a big model for Mercedes. Not physically, it's just a little bit bigger than the old one, but it's very important. This new CLA will be sold both as a pure electric vehicle and as a hybrid. This matte black car is the EV and the light blue one over there is the hybrid one. They differ subtly. I'm gonna go through some of the differences in this video, although we should be able to do more of an in-depth analysis and comparison between the two when we actually get the car to review and we have more time to spend with it. So let me walk you around it. The fascia is really bold. It's reminiscent of the EQXX style of design, and there's a lot of EQXX inspired technology underpinning this car, which is pretty exciting. And you can tell the electric version apart from the hybrid by the fact that this one, the BEV, has light up stars on the grill, 143 of them to be precise. While the hybrid gets an open grill, it still has a star pattern, but it's more subtle and it still lets air go through it. Underpinning the new CLA is a modular platform called MMA. It allows for both combustion and electric power, and it will underpin three additional models, the CLA wagon and replacements for the EQA and EQB crossovers. The latter will likely be a 7-seater. EVs built on this platform will run at 800 volts, allowing for excellent operating efficiency as well as fast charging at up to 320 kilowatts. Only the big battery CLA EV with an 85 kilowatt hour NMC pack will be able to charge at this rate. The base model gets a 58 kilowatt hour LFP battery that has a lower charging power, but because of its lower capacity, both will do the 20 to 80 percent dash in around the same time. The electric CLA will be powered by a single electric motor driving the rear wheels in base form and the second motor will be added to power the front axle for all-wheel drive and additional go as an option for the large battery variant. The combustion model on the other hand will be front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. This hybrid version will be available with three power levels, 134, 160 and 190 horsepower. All of them will have the same Mercedes-designed 1.5-liter M252 turbocharged four-cylinder engine. They will all share the same 8-speed double-clutch transmission that's technically a triple-clutch according to Mercedes, with the third clutch being used to disengage the engine completely from the wheels, allowing for coasting and pure electric driving at up to 62 miles per hour. Power for the 48-volt hybrid system will be stored in a 1.3 kilowatt-hour battery pack that will provide a couple of miles of electric range, but it's its main goal will be to lessen the load on the combustion engine and help it run more efficiently. No plug-in hybrids are planned on the MMA platform. I think it looks quite good. The car is a bit bigger, so it rides on a longer wheelbase. It's a bit taller, and part of that height is due to the fact that it has a battery pack in the floor, which pushes everything up. But you can see that better from the side. Mercedes says that this car, the new CLA, is only three and a bit centimeters taller than the car it replaces. However, for some reason, it looks taller than that. Maybe the belt line is a bit pushed up and the greenhouse is even more squished than in the outgoing car, but it just looks like there's a lot more metal on the side. They did try to hide the extra height with these creases like this one here and this one here, and it's worked to a degree, and I like the car, but I think I prefer the old car better. Tell us in the comments which CLA you prefer, this one or the older one. It gets flush door handles that pop out when you touch them, and it still has frameless doors like the outgoing car, which is just as sexy as ever, I think. My favorite view is the rear three-quarter view. I think it's very successful on the new CLA. With this wraparound light cluster, it's not a light bar. It has vertical lighting elements, which look kind of cool, and at least it's a different trend than all the continuous light bars on the market. I think I actually prefer this. I really like the proportions. There's something about the rear that reminds me of a GLC Coupe for whatever reason. This looks like a fastback with a very, very sloping roof here in the back. I like it, but it does eat into headroom. Mercedes is making a shooting brake, so a sporty wagon version of this with a long roof, which should result in more headroom for rear occupants. But that's not coming to the US, unfortunately. Like any self-respecting, EV sold in 2025, the CLA has a usable frunk. Its capacity is just over 100 liters, 101 liters. Aside from the obviously different grill, there will be other ways to differentiate between the combustion and pure electric CLAs. Firstly, the electric vehicle has a higher ride height and it's visibly higher and it also has a staggered wheel setup with wider rear tires. The hybrid sits lower to the ground and it has a square setup. The CLA EV promises impressive range too. 
the WLTP rating for the CLA250 Plus with the bigger battery is 492 miles and you won't lose much range if you go for the dual motor CLA354 Matic which is rated at 479 miles. Power for the 250 Plus is 268 horsepower while the dual motor gets 349 horses and they sprint to 60 in 6.6 .6 and 4.8 seconds respectively. All electric CLAs get a two-speed transmission on the rear axle just like a Porsche Tiger whose purpose is to help with acceleration off the line as well as high-speed cruising efficiency. Stepping inside the CLA, you are greeted by a completely new style of interior compared to, well, any previous Mercedes model. The seating position is a bit higher than what you're used to in the old CLA. And of course, the battery pack in the floor is the reason behind it. Let me see if I can get it any lower. Yeah, I feel like I'm perched up a little bit, but you because the belt line is high so the sill line the window line is high you feel cocooned and it feels sporty inside here you can get a third screen in here for the passenger which is the same as the central screen just in front of the passenger and they can operate most of the functions through it the infotainment in this car is called mbos and it's a development of mbux it works very well and it has chat gpt integration as well as google integration into the maps so it's while it's not google maps it draws from you know, Google's database of places and ratings and all of that, and traffic information, of course. Just looking and feeling around the interior, I think the level of quality is certainly better than in the old CLA. You get soft touch stuff around here on the door, this floating type panel on the door, which is pretty cool. There's also a floating console here with an optional phone charger here that isn't cooled, but it's, um, it's good that it has it. And there's definitely a feeling of extra quality compared to the previous CLA. Now I'll go hop in the back real quick where things aren't quite perfect. I was quite disappointed to discover that the floor is very high in the back of the CLA. So my thighs aren't really touching the cushion here and my knees feel like they're pushed up and you can't really slide your feet underneath the front seat. This makes traveling in the back of a CLA kind of a chore on longer journeys. I mean, a C-Class is so much better to be in the back of compared to this. Even though this is a bigger car than the CLA it replaces, I don't really feel the extra space. I do have a very good level of headroom with this glass roof, which is like a single panel that covers the entire roof. And it's, it's probably the most spectacular part of being in the back of this car. This is vast expanse of glass that you can look through. It's, it's really nice. The high floor isn't an issue in the hybrid version, which doesn't have a battery pack and you get a transmission tunnel here, but the footwells are a bit deeper and it should be more comfortable than the pure BEV. Whichever version of the CLA you go for, Mercedes promises it will feel more grown up, more upmarket, and it will have higher comfort levels with a quieter cabin compared to the outgoing model. There are some details that will remind you that you're in an entry-level Mercedes, like the window switches on the driver's door, of which there are only two, with a toggle that allows you to operate either the front or rear windows using Using the same buttons. We've seen this in other cars like VW's ID line and it's not our favorite solution, let's put it that way. Mercedes hasn't confirmed an AMG variant yet, but it's rumored that it will be a full EV with around 536 horsepower. Thanks for watching.